Hi, I'm Alex Jordan from Long Color Grading and FilmSimplified.com. For a beginner, uh, there are a lot of terminologies that are thrown around in, in color correction and grading sessions that seems uh, confusing. So in this video, um, we'll be simplifying some of the most important terminologies in, in color correction and grading. So we'll be starting with the easiest terminologies and move our way to the more advanced ones. Let's start. In simple terms, hue is the color of an object, but the hue controller replaces colors with other colors. So for example, this is the hue controller here, and take a look at the image once I control the hue controller, notice that I'm changing all the colors. They're being replaced with other colors. So the green just became blue, for example. Saturation is simply the amount of color in an image. So for example, this is an image with no saturation, high saturation, less saturation, high saturation. Contrast simply is an effect that pushes the bright parts in the image to become brighter while pushing the dark parts of the image to become darker. So I'll simply increase contrast in this image and notice how the bright areas are becoming brighter while the dark areas are becoming darker. So contrast pushes the highlight to become brighter, the shadows to become darker. However, the pivot uh, changes the uh, contrast effects opinion on, on what's considered highlights and what's considered shadows. Well, to explain this is very simple. Take a look at this image again, I'll increase the contrast. And notice that this part of the building was pushed to become darker. So the contrast effect considered this part of the image to be shadows and just made it darker. However, if I control the pivot point and move it to the left, now I just changed how the contrast effect sees this part of the building and I convinced it that now this is highlights and it needs to be pushed to become brighter. So the pivot simply changes the contrast effect opinion on what's uh, bright and what's dark. Speaking of Resolve, if you're a beginner and you're interested in learning how to use Resolve, you'll love our free crash course that will teach you the basics of every tab in Resolve. Simply go to filmsimplified.com and sign up for free. Highlights are simply the brightest points in the image. So take a look at these areas here. These are highlights. Shadows are simply the darkest areas in the image. Take a look at the window here. It's pretty dark, so it's in the shadows. Midtone is everything in between highlights and shadows, so any part of the image that is not bright enough to be considered highlight or dark enough to be considered shadows is basically midtones. Lift is simply an effect that controls the brightness of the dark areas in the image. So for example, take a look at this image here, this part is dark, so the lift controller will change the brightness not of the entire image, but only of the dark areas in the image. Well, gain is the opposite. It's simply an effect that controls the brightness of the bright areas in the image. Take a look at these parts here. Now I'm controlling the brightness of the bright areas in the image. And gamma is an effect that controls the brightness of the midtones. As we discussed earlier, midtones are any area that is not considered shadows nor highlights. Simple as that. Dynamic range falls into two different kinds of dynamic range. First, there is a scene dynamic range. A scene's dynamic range is simply the difference in brightness between the darkest and the brightest objects in an image. And this is not related to cameras or anything. You can just be walking around in any scene you're looking at in real life, there are some dark areas and some bright areas. So the difference between the darkest and the brightest areas in any scene is that scene's dynamic range. Now let's move to the camera's dynamic range. A camera's dynamic range is simply the difference in brightness between the darkest object and brightest object a camera can capture. Usually it's measured in stops, but for simplicity, let's just measure it in apples. Let's simply say that the difference in uh, the darkest and the brightest objects in a scene is like five apples. And you're using a camera that can only record four apples of difference. This simply means that this camera cannot record all the dynamic range in the scenes because there is one apple missing. So for example, if you look at this scene here, if the camera was unable to record all the information in the scene, we will be losing information either in highlights or shadows or even both. However, this camera was able to record everything here, but you get the point. Power windows are simply shapes that you can draw on an image in order to control the colors inside this particular shape. Note that any effect you add here will affect all the colors inside this shape. And you can, of course, change the position and the size of the shape. 
It's simply an effect that allows you to select a certain color in the image in order to affect this particular color. For example, here I have a qualifier that only controls the green parts of the image. So now if I change the colors, it's only affecting this particular color that we selected. So qualifying is simply selecting a color in order to apply effects to this particular color. Raw. RAW is simply a file format that allows us to record all the information that was captured by the camera's sensor and not throw anything, uh, for the most part. And that seems cool, but what does that allow us to do? Well, if you're recording uh, in RAW, uh, you can do some pretty cool stuff. So when you're recording in with a camera that doesn't record in RAW, usually what happens is that you need to select, of course, the ISO of the uh, camera or the sensitivity, and the white balance and this is all baked into the file and they cannot be changed later however when you record raw you can change both of these things later so for example this is a raw file i can simply open the raw tab and here i can open this drop down menu and change the iso of the camera so even though we filmed with iso 640 i can change that to iso 1600 for example and i can also use this drop down menu for example to change the white balance of the image note that there aren't many cameras that that film in raw video, so don't think that that's a must. Actually, there is a solution. Log is not a format by itself, but I'm just gonna call it format here to make things easier to understand. So think of it like this. Log is a format that allows us to capture way more information into the file than if we shot with non-log. Just think of it that way. When we film in log, the image initially looks very flat and desaturated. However, after color correction and grading, it looks way better. It's not as good as uh, shooting raw, but it provides most of the uh, flexibility and functionality at a much smaller file size. Bit depth is uh, simply a number that represents the accuracy of each pixel when it records a particular color. So how accurate this pixel can represent that particular color. A higher bit depth uh, provides way more accurate colors with smoother transitions between colors. This helps a lot in reducing banding. Take a look at banding here. This phenomena is called banding and higher bit depth footage is less prone to this phenomenon among many other benefits, of course. So I hope this was helpful. If it was helpful, please visit us at filmsimplified.com where you can join our free DaVinci Resolve Crash Course that is designed for the absolute beginner and will take you through every tab in Resolve. Thank you. Filmsimplified.com